Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be going over the mapping strategy I plan to use to push level 100 on my Toxic Rain champion. It's the mapping strategy I've been using thus far to hit level 99 fairly fast and easily, and I think it's probably the overall best strategy to level up your character if they're tanky enough to handle it. So I'm going to start this video by explaining the strategy how to roll the maps, etc, etc. Then I'm going to finish the video by going over all of my defensive layers so that you guys can gauge what you might need in order to take full advantage of the strategy. Alright, so this strategy revolves around these Atlas passives. We have 30% increased experience from Beyond Demons, and we get 100% increased monsters and 50% increased experience from Abyss monsters. So this will generate a lot of experience because they both synergize very well together. The reason they synergize well is because when you are juicing a map for beyond, for example, if you're doing a Nemesis 3 strategy, or if you're just doing like triple quad beyond, you get a lot of value from adding in, a, in an abyss. And when you add in a bunch of abysses, you just spawn so many beyond demons from the abysses. And the abyss also spawns a lot of monsters because of this node. So when I was leveling from 98 to 99, I was seeing upwards of 45 million XP per hour on the top end. And then if you're using Nemesis 3, which is extremely profitable, the XP might dip down towards 20 to 30 million because you're spending a lot of time picking up loot. However, this is fine because uh, you make a lot of currency doing that. Now, for the center atlas passives, the uh, enduring influence is pretty useful for rolling your sextants. You're going to be looking for stuff like Honestly, it doesn't matter too much. You can use any sextants you want. Like, you could just use awakened sextants and just, just fill it up. Just make sure they all add pack size. Ideally, though, you would want slaying enemies from beyond has 6% chance to attract monsters from beyond. And you'd want the two additional abysses. Um, if you want this to work a little bit better, you can either get four fraught platinum watchstones which increase the uh, percentage for slaying enemies from beyond. But you could also use the cheaper watchstone uh, Demonic, which if it's a T1 roll will have 6% chance to spawn an additional beyond demon. Um, this one isn't as good if you're incorporating Nemesis 3 strategy, but if you're just blasting maps really fast and you're not investing too much, um, this is a really cheap watchstone, well, comparatively cheap to the fraught ones, that will boost your XP. So, since I advise you to use either of those watchstones and have four of them, that makes the Secrets of the Stones another important center atlas passive. Um, the rest don't matter, it's only here and here that matter. Alright, so now on to rolling your map. There are some dangerous map mods that you need to be aware of when you're trying to push really high levels like 99 or 100 because you you want to just never die. You want to have no circumstances where you could possibly rip in a map. The number one mod you should avoid is 
the percentage maximum player resistances. So you'd lose minus 12 to minus 9. Don't ever run this. Um, it is by far the most rippy modifier. Just re-roll. Re-roll the map if you get this. Um, the second most dangerous, I would say, is players are cursed with Ellie weakness. Now, this does nothing if you have 95% to all resistances. I don't think it's very feasible to get that. Like I'm at 80, 81, 85. There are just too many suffixes that you need for damage on toxic rain that I don't think you can afford that. So technically you can run these maps. What what I use is I use this flask right here. A uh, bismuth flask um, gives you 35 all res, so it's going to boost your res back up to 75, even though you're cursed. And you need to craft on reuse at the end of this flask effect, and you just press it at the beginning of the map, and you run the map fast enough so it's always just re triggering on its own. And then basically, it's like a map without LE weakness. Now, the one risk of this is if you're slow at mapping you might not be generating the charges enough to keep it 100% uptime. So, um, it's really just kind of a feel thing. You can skip it if you're not confident, or you can run the business business flask um, to just counter it completely. Another mod, I don't know if I would skip it, but I would just be aware of it, is Monsters fire two additional projectiles because that, like 66% more damage. Um, just be careful. Just be aware that you can take like a surprising amount of chunk damage randomly. Now, players are cursed with vulnerability. We have a ton of armor as uh, toxic rain, but. Um, this also lets monsters bleed you. You should always be using a life flask that gives immune to bleeding anyways, so this shouldn't be too much of an issue. You just have to be mindful that you're not just spamming your life flask repeatedly so that it has zero charges, because then you could be in a situation where you have bleeding on you and you don't have any life, life charges. But I wouldn't skip this mod, I'd just be mindful of it. Monsters gain frenzy charge on hit. Again, I wouldn't skip this. Just be aware, frenzy charges are much more powerful on monsters than on players. So like, this will increase their damage. And finally, monsters have a increased crit chance and crit strike multi. I I would only be uh, scared of this if it had a bunch of other nasty damage mods like um, fizz is extra fire, fizz is extra cold, fizz is extra lightning, frenzy charge. Just like if the map looks rippy already and it also has this, maybe reroll it. I believe all of these are suffixes, so I didn't notice any prefixes while I was leveling that we should avoid. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any other uh, map mods that you just refuse to run as Toxic Rain. This possible I'm missing some, and also it's down to personal preference, but for me it's just this one, absolute no-go, and this one, just maybe maybe skip this if you're close to leveling because you can screw, you can screw yourself really badly if your business flask runs out. All right, so now we're going to go on to our defensive layers. The first defensive layer is spell suppression should be at 100%. Like at lower levels, you can get away with not having it at 100%, but when you're pushing level 100, you don't want to take any chances. This gives you a 100% chance to block basically double damage from spells. 
Now, there's a map mod that lowers spell suppression by 20, so you might want to skip out on that map mod. I haven't been skipping it, but it's something to consider. Now, another one is your armor rating with your vol shell, vol molten shell active. Let's pull up POB. My armor rating is 50,000, and the reason it's so high is because I get the cluster up here. This uh, increases your armor and evasion by a lot. Um, evasion rating with Vol of Grace active. My evasion rating is also very high, which is because uh, I'm pathing up here instead of going in here. Now, when should you use Vol Molten Shell and Vol of Grace? This just kind of it's kind of a feel thing, but if you're in like a bunch of unique monsters, that's possibly a time where you just want to activate that. I generally don't activate these unless something crazy is happening. Uh, now, this next one is very, very important. Maximum life is energy shield, body armor craft, plus the ghost dance keystone. So the ghost dance keystone. So every two seconds you gain a charge on your ghost shroud up to three. And when you're hit, you lose one of these charges and uh, you recover energy shield based on your evasion rating, but because our evasion rating is so high, you will just go right up to full. So if you see my character, I have 700 energy shield. So even when all my ghost shrouds are gone, after two seconds, the next hit I get will instantly refill my energy shield up to 700. So this boosts your effective life by a lot because it's blocking a bunch of hits at the beginning and then recharging your energy shield. And you shouldn't be in a situation where there's so many devastating hits one after another and you're not like eliminating that enemy. So while mapping um, this uh, body armor craft with the ghost stance, um, it's absolutely massive in terms of survivability. Now, the next one you might not be able to get realistically, it's uh, headhunter buffs and rampage speed buffs. Now there's really no excuse to not have rampage. I made a video, I think my previous videos on how to get rampage for free on toxic rain. The move speed and the damage definitely helps your defense. Move speed is very good for a defense in general. Headhunter gives you a lot of speed and it gives you it also gives you like extra life sometimes, extra energy shield, it gives you proximity shield. It's pretty good for leveling. Especially since we're taking advantage of a beyond strat. So beyond monsters will be giving us lots of mods to steal. Now the next defensive layer is capping your LE res and having as much chaos res as possible. For my elemental resistances, they're like just over cap. They're not high enough to deal with the elemental weakness curse. You need 95% to deal with that. I don't think you should try and aim for that. There's uh, too many other stuff we need on our gear to hit that as well. But if you can, you know, then you can run LA weakness perfectly fine. Chaos res, I'm at 19%. Now, higher would be better, but even at 19%, there's like no chaos damage while mapping that will one shot or even come close to one shotting me so you know 19% is fine I'd aim for at least above 0% now the last two are high life pool and high damage just get them as high as you can I guess I have a 6000 life pool and I do 9.3 million damage the faster you're killing things, obviously, the safer the map will be. Six million is a little overkill on life. You don't need to have that much. 
that you you can get a you could get away with 5.5k and that would be just fine. All right. I think that about covers it. So what I use for leveling is I really like the arcade map. It's a T16, so obviously you're getting more XP from that. Other maps, um, Tropical Island is pretty good. I run a lot of Silo, and you need to be careful with Silo because the boss is pretty rippy. So, um, I do like Silo. I've, I've used Silo a lot for getting up to 99. I haven't died to the boss yet, but just like fair warning, be mindful of that boss. He's not one of the easier ones. He's pretty difficult. He has phases. Thankfully, because he has phases, you can refill your flasks during the ads phases. Um, yeah, I think that about covers it. I might make an update once I hit level 100 if I have any additional advice, but uh, I leveled from 97 to 98 with zero deaths, and then 98 to 99 I actually did die once. I died when I shifted into Nightmare and I got shotgunned by the by the arc monsters. Um, yeah, that was kind of stupid, but it happens. It's not the end of the world. I think that about wraps up this video. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys have any other advice for leveling via mapping. The reason I like leveling with this strat is because you actually make money as opposed to other strategies like five way or breach stone rotas, you're base you're just paying money for the levels, which I also find is less rewarding because you're not really you're not really earning that level one hundred, you're just buying it. Anyways that's it for this one. Feel free to follow if you want more Toxic Rain content. I will see you guys in the next one.